They said it was impossible. They said... Ah, you can't put together the most elite team of comic book reviewers on the planet and do, you know, a podcast or something like that? Despite all that, today we can proudly announce... Yeah, yeah, they were right. We, uh, we couldn't do it. So instead, we brought you the most vile, ignorant, unprofessional group of comic book enthusiasts we could find. This is Panel to Panel, the Game Rage Magazine comic podcast. What is going to be the most inflammatory episode of Panel to Panel you have likely ever heard in your entire life. My name's Josh. I'm here today with good buddy Adam. Yes. Hello. Greetings. And um, if you want to listen to our other podcasts that are even more inflammatory or less inflammatory, depending on your perspective, you can go to GameRageMagazine.com where you can hear the full assortment of podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at GameRageMagazine, Twitter slash X at GameRageMag, and, I mean, you know, if you're lazy, you can just go to YouTube because guess what? Everything's on there all in one nice little fucking easy channel. This shit's all delineated. It's fucking great. You can go to Game Rage Magazine on YouTube. If you want to follow Adam, you can follow him at, at All Gas No Trash Official, and you should do yourself a favor and check out the All Gas No Trash, Trash Podcast which is the Game Rage Music Show, which is conveniently located at all the fucking places I just talked about. Yep, you said it. So, if you haven't already figured why this episode is going to be controversial by the title of it, we'll just tell you anyways. Because the title of it is Movies Ruin Comics. Yes. And Adam, you were the one who brought this subject up, so why don't you go ahead and, uh, go ahead and give me your thoughts on that. I think movies, specifically comic book movies, have ruined fucking comic books. Yes, it has escalated the popularity of them, but at the price of, I think, good storytelling, having characters that have been long-standing icons and whatever publisher you fancy, Marvel or DC, man, I saw a meme. Not, not that I've actually seen the Deadpool movie, the Deadpool and Wolverine movie. But I guess we could start there. Channing Tatum is fucking Gambit. You gotta be fucking kidding me, dude. The memes, the the clips of the movie that have been... The dude does a very shitty Cajun fucking accent. And maybe this, maybe this dude really fucking loved Gambit and he wanted to be the character or whatever. But goddamn, dude. When you put somebody that doesn't fit the character into that specific role it just hurts the movie man it seems and I know we talked about this before but yeah I know it's a movie studio's objective to fucking make as much money as they can and the way you secure that or the way you safeguard from having potential losses is to have celebrities in movies right sure that's like the number one way to do it have the draw of the actor but it comes at the cost of the fucking character, dude. A hundred fucking percent. So I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you go on it. Channing Tatum is also a bad actor. Okay, I love Gambit. Gambit's like probably my favorite X Man or X Men character. Okay, is, is Gambit, and I don't know if you know the backstory of why he was Gambit, but. He was originally cast in the Gambit was supposed to have a standalone movie in like 2015 or something I remember like that, that yeah. right? And it it ended up getting canceled. And I think the reason it got canceled is why we're seeing is what we're seeing on the screen with this Deadpool movie. Well, I haven't seen the movie yet, but the memes not so good. The the Cajun accent is garbage. Uh, again, I think Channing Tatum is just a bad actor in general. He also ruined Duke from GI Joe. Because he was Duke in G.I. Joe and fucking ruined the character. So I think he should stick to like 
Magic Mike and like those kind of fucking movies. Uh, the movie that he was in with Jonah Hill where he was like a fucking the 21 Jump Street, those action comedies, fucking stick to those, man. I don't think, and the reason why he was cast as Gambit in this movie is because Ryan Reynolds fucking stood up and said, if we're gonna have Gambit in here, it has to be Channing Tatum. And he fought, I, I read a lot of stuff saying that he adamantly fought for this guy, for Channing Tatum to be Gambit. And now it's, it's because Channing Tatum does also love Gambit. But there's nothing wrong with that. But that's and there's nothing wrong with that. I agree. But this is why actors shouldn't be fucking involved in the casting of movies, and also directors themselves because they also create their little posse of Tim Burton, dude, Winona Ryder, fucking yeah. uh, what's his name? God damn it, Beetlejuice, oh, Michael yeah. Keaton, right? Johnny Depp. Those are like his people and. That is, to me, what stops from making a great comic book movie even better because I want to work with the people I want to work with because they're easy. I know it works. Right, We're going to yeah. get through this very quickly. If we only have six months to to make this movie, at least let it be with my people because this is what needs to be done. And it's also what can get the job done quickly instead of me fighting with people. Right. Instead of like, instead of having well, objectively the person for the best person for the role, it's let me get my buddy. Exactly what you said with Ryan Reynolds and Channing Tatum. Yeah, and it's it's the like with directors or whoever. It's it's hey, I'm getting paid salary and based on maybe points on how well this does. Right, I want to do this as quickly as fucking possible. So that I can get out of here and go on to the next thing. That's what most, the mentality of most Hollywood people is. I need to get this done as quickly as possible because I'm not making as much money if I'm spending eight months filming fucking whatever, fucking Deadpool, and whatever, whatever it is. If I'm spending eight months filming this, I could have maybe filmed two movies in that time frame and made twice as much money as opposed to being stuck on some bullshit. So... I'm going to stack the cast of people that I know will shut the fuck up. They'll read the lines. We won't have to do 18 million fucking takes, and it'll be fucking good. We'll all have a great time. We'll all make a lot of money, and we'll move on. Who gives a shit about the end result product? Because they know the characters are going to fucking sell the movie. Like, just, just the, yeah, the name itself. That's all you needed. That's all you needed was Deadpool and Wolverine. And Hugh Jackman is Wolverine, especially when his fucking bitch ass said he was never going to be Wolverine again. And now here he is being Wolverine again. I mean, yeah, I don't think he could pass up the opportunity to wear the classic costume. But at the same token, not even that fucking role is right either. With Wolverine being six foot, whatever the fuck Hugh That's Jackman true. is. Wolverine is a, a fucking... He's like a manlet. He's a, fi- he's a five foot three goblin yeah. or dwarf. He's a manlet, dude. That's what he is. That goes berserk like every five seconds. Yeah, and just kills everybody. And just kills everybody. But instead we got Hugh Jackman... Giga Chad fucking Hugh Jackman mm, true. being the Australian savior to play Wolverine that just doesn't sit well with me. So let me ask you this. Was there ever a time that you felt that comic book movies were an asset and a, and a an enhancement to the comics instead of just a hindrance? Yeah, I think movies, I mean, granted, I, I'm shooting myself in the foot by saying this because Brandon Lee obviously didn't get his acting career by just act. Well, the dude could act, but at the same token, he was the son of Bruce Lee. So Right, yeah. But that movie, I think, for, for it not being a... And you're talking about The Crow, right? The Crow, So everybody right. knows what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, sorry, I, I forgot about that. Sorry. But if I'm not mistaken, that book is of Dark Horse Publishing, which is, I think, something that Marvel owns. Yeah. But that movie, to me is how you can do things beyond just the superhero genre of comics itself. But everybody just is entertained by the simplicity, what you would expect out of an action superhero movie. Like that movie kind of elevated superhero comics to the level of like art. Yeah. Like, I mean, it was considered an art house film because it was kind of low budget and also yeah, yeah. like the the set pieces were kind of like cheap i guess you could say but it, the way they did it was just like f- fucking amazing and the movie wasn't even technically completed but there's other shit out there that I, uh i mean v for vendetta even though it's not true to the subject matter within the book itself because v is actually more he didn't actually care 
what happened post him blowing up the parliament or whatever. Right, yeah. It was just, let me just create anarchy and get rid of all government states in general, right, like yeah. the UK, uh, in, within the UK, and hopefully spawning that across all nations. Whatever happened afterwards, that's up to everybody else. But I felt even with the, even with V being painted in a hero, I think it still inspired or even elevated itself beyond just being a superhero genre. It was about like philosophical questions and stuff like yeah. that, and even political questions. So right. I think it, it, in some regard, like those things, I think were good for comic books in general, for like the movies, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But does, does that answer your question? No, yeah, yeah, it does. So, so... What do you think was the tipping point, though, that, like, turned it into, oh, this is a problem? Uh, shit, man. I'd probably maybe say, like, Marvel Phase 4, everything post-Infinity War slash Endgame, like, 2019, that they didn't really know what they were doing because they were kind of fumbling around with all these Thor movies and, like, yeah, dude, was I looking, was I looking forward to gore? The God Butcher within Thor, it's the, the Thor movie. Yes. Did people get excited about Christian Bale being fucking, you know, the the lead for that? Like the, the person to take on the responsibility of playing Gore and then not even show a God being killed on screen? Like that's, <laughs> that fucking sucks. But yeah. also there's been a lot of criticism that says from, from people across like the internet community that love comic books. They said the quality of the CGI has gone down since the end of Avengers and uh, the Infinity War or Endgame that uh, it hasn't been as quite as good because they're trying to pump out more movies consistently. So in addition to things not looking as good and even the plots not even being all that special or uh, as good as like the previous movies that I feel like Marvel Phase 4 Beyond has been the problematic the problematic part of like what has made comic book movies insufferable. Yeah. So, so how do you think that affects comics themselves? Uh, does this affect? Does the shittiness of the stories? Does that play a role at all in? Yeah, I think you know the storytelling of comics or whatever. All right, I, I'm not actually going to answer your question directly, but I oh, kind of no. want to go on yeah. something like on a similar note. All right. Um, I think the way comic book movies have also been problematic is when characters have to schedule their stories or even uh, the stories themselves and also the comic series pivoting towards the movies. Because like when Moon Knight came out, Moon Knight, the comic book kind of also started again. And then when when Disney didn't have like the Fantastic Four assets and also... Uh, Deadpool and also uh, X-Men, they fucking withheld them from the Marvel Universe. Like, they went away for five years plus. Mm -hmm. And that's, like, kind of a staple within comic books to have those... I mean, Fantastic Four, the first Marvel family, like, why wouldn't you have them having a comic book? So it's like... Because, in my my opinion, Disney withheld X-Men and Fantastic Four because they didn't have those assets from Fox. right. So it's like... Why? Why do we have? Why do we, the consumers, have to fucking pay for that? Like, why do? I mean, not literally, but why do we have to be the ones that receive the punishment for that? For yeah. the characters that we fucking love, I fucking love the X Men. Why? Why am I suffering for that? That's a very good point. Money. That's what it is. It's all about the money and their bottom line. Mm. And they don't want to help Sony, mm. but it's like, well, fuck. Why not? Why not make yourself some money off of this? Put out some comics so you can make some fucking money. Yeah. Like. Even though you're not making the movies, like... Uh, I also think, uh, like I said, it's it's <clears throat> ongoing series being restarted with, like, Black Black Panther, I think, restarted when the first movie came out. Mm. So they started a num- another number one series, or they started with another number one. Uh, so it's like, that happens pretty frequently. And I think it inhibits good storytelling when they have to have... It's like, okay, we have this movie coming out, we need these characters to be pushed out in the forefront. So then even like 
for more obscure characters, they kind of be they kind of get pushed to the forefront, which mm. is kind of good because maybe they're obscure, but it's also forced. So it's yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, I'm trying to think of other examples as far as like storytelling, dude. Again, if it's about the movies themselves, I know they're trying to get people interested, but uh, <laughs> shit, I lost my point. Back, well, back to what you're saying about the actors and stuff like that. Do you think this is why they brought back Robert Downey Jr. to be this incarnation of Doctor Doom? Because they're like, oh, he's easy to work with. We know he'll just do the shit. And They've already done it before. Yeah, through, what what right? do they do? What do they do? They got the Rousseau brothers who did the Infinity and Infinity War and fucking Endgame. Yeah, the, the most successful films yeah. in the franchise or even the Marvel un- Cinematic Universe. What do they do? They go right back to the well, right where things peaked. You yeah. go right back to the people that fucking did it. Yeah, and the everybody best. that was in there is just going to be the same old, sh- same old shit, like we said. Uh... <laughs> And I don't know what's going to be the story for Doctor Doom, but again, it's for the convenience of the actor to bring him into the mix and then have Robert Downey Jr. play some. Well, I'm guessing what's going to happen is he's going to be some type of variation of Tony Stark, which is something we talked about in the previous yeah. episode. Is like it's it's just going to be Tony because that's kind of what it boils down to. Is like Doctor Doom is second best at science, is second best as a magician or not a magician but like a sorcerer yeah like he's the best of both worlds that's what he's supposed to be but what are they gonna do in marvel terms oh shit let's just get robert downey jr to play somebody that is technically savvy or scientifically savvy but also does the sorcerer supreme shit well um but let's make an alternate story to say this is what tony stark would have been if he went down this path yeah yeah probably hmm do you have anything to add? Yeah, I mean, I well, I think I agree with you. I think that comic book movies, to me, they they ruin comics in the way that like it brought a bunch of normies into it. It brought a bunch of non comic book people, and that that's why we can't go to Comic Con now. That's why you have to enter into a lottery to go to Comic Con because. So many fucking assholes that probably never even picked up a comic. It, I, if you go to Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con right now, I guarantee you there's probably a smaller number of comic book vendors actually there selling just like comics or whatever. And you're probably, the comic book vendors that are there are selling like the high ticket big items, right? But I guarantee you there's more Funko Pop vendors or fucking everything merchandise. Else. Everything else. T- all the other shit. That's probably the majority. And Comic Cons originally were just for people to go buy, sell, and trade comics. That's what, like, the whole point of it was. It wasn't... And, and then, you know, yes, they would have some of the artists or some of the writers. Like, you could do panels with them and whatnot. Now, putting all this major Hollywood machine behind it has just turned it into something that it's basically become inaccessible to the normal average comic book consumer Uh, and sure maybe a percentage of the normies that jumped on the train picked up comic book collecting fuck those guys sorry i don't mean to gatekeep but when they started showing up and buying number ones and then never buying i mean dude that's that shit sucks because it's like the people that really enjoyed comics might not get the the comics they typically would because some other group of people i mean these new fans these new casual fans are like yeah. trying to get their foot their feet wet they'll buy a couple comics and then let's say they actually sell out it's like everybody else that was a comic book fan or a long time uh a long time customer for a store it's like that's all also the other problem dude it's like the people that were comic book collectors suffer because of this because then people get the idea that are casual fans that they could just flip comic books because they think of a key issue like oh cool i like this character but maybe i can make some money if you're doing that too if you're doing that thinking like you can make a million dollars well not that you make a million dollars but turn a profit by flipping comics dude you're fu- you're gonna dude. learn you're gonna lose more times than you are gonna win oh 100 percent. and uh if you look at back at the uh the the new 52 deal from dc mm-hmm. uh because they wanted to 
try and get this new people that were coming in. This was what, in 2011-ish, I guess, is when they did that. Um, I, 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 wa- I wanted to buy all, I bought as the ones that I, the, the books that I liked, yeah. like Batman, you know, Detective Comics, the Batmans, uh, fucking the Red Hood and the Outlaws, mm. um, fucking Swamp Thing, like, I bought all those and I, I, I was like, fuck, well, I was reading these before, I guess I'll just start, th-. but it was so fucking hard to get, and once you got into, like, like, later issues, it was even harder to get later issues, so, like, I have like a bunch of one through like fives of like all those series. And then after that, it almost became impossible. It was hard enough to try to find these number ones when they were coming out because assholes were just like, oh, I'm going to fucking flip these and make a bunch of money. And it turned out that those weren't even, never even became worth really much money. Some of them were. Some of them, but the majority of them not. Oh, yeah, like 90% of them were shit. Yeah, and I mean like I don't – like I, I've never – I've never actually sold a comic book that I've owned. I've mm. never done it. Mm. And I did think about it when I found out that when, when I remember when we did the interview with Ed and he told us that he came up with the original Dr. Afra character. Yeah. And I was like, oh shit, man. I was like, I swear that I have a Dr. Afra comic and I have a number one in pristine condition, never taken out of the fucking bag, basically. Mm-hmm. Fucking Dr. Afro number one. Well, actually, I had to take it out of the bag because I read it first, and then I fucking threw it back in there after I first bought it, and I threw it back in. But I bought that, and then I was like, man, I wonder... I was going to have him fucking sign it and just be like... To write something on there like the real the fucking... Real, the, the, real real, the real creator, fucking Ed Erdelak, and then just because just that'd be kind of cool to have. Because I don't... I don't have these things to fucking flip them and make money on them. He literally told me, he's like, oh, yeah, man, I'll devalue your comic book for you. And I was like, yeah, of course it would. But, like, that's not the intent. Like, I'm probably never going to sell this thing. Any of the comics I have, I'm probably never actually going to sell them. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't buy them with the intention of selling them and making a profit. Same thing with the fucking Funko Pop addiction that I had. Yeah, now I got all these fucking Funko Pops that I don't know what the fuck to do with. I don't think I should just give them to somebody, but I never bought them with the intention of selling them. So now it's like, well, when it's time to get rid of them, yeah, I have some that are worth quite a bit of money. But like, that's, that, that kind of, def- I don't know, it kind of feels shitty to do that. Like to, to like do it, to try to turn, I don't know, it feels fucking shitty. And then I feel like I'm enabling all these fucking assholes that jump into things like this that are the fair weather, you know, fans or whatever you want to call them, the yeah. normies. I feel like I'm just enabling that if I try and do that. All right, I think I, I, think I know what point I was trying to get at. Oh, okay. For uh, what I was saying about the storylines and shit, mm. it what what I think ends up happening to me is that you have a whiteboard, right? And you have like these these uh, magnets. Yeah. And let's say one's Kang, and like that was kind of thing that they were building towards, like for the movies. So it's like, yeah. all right, let's do in the comics. You need to find the story that works for Kang, though. So they'll mm. throw the magnets up, like of all these characters they need to present within the comics to sell the movies. Right. It's like you figure out the stories, as opposed to letting the 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 writers themselves find a reason to bring them into the fold naturally, organically. Yeah. That's that's to me what happened with comic books is that everything started being ca- uh, curated towards what the movies like. The whole schedule is revolving around the movies, right? Right. Yeah. That, that's the part that like gets to me is that sometimes that ends up resulting in good storytelling from the writers and the artists uh, creating things that never have been done before. And now it's like, well, we got to bring it. If we're going to sell comic books, we need to bring in the casual fans to bring in the new money. Right. Yeah. So we got to start over with the number one. We got to make it more modern. We got to do this or that or whatever the fuck it is. Um, so that's where I think movies have contributed for the worst to the comic book medium itself. Yeah, I can agree with that. So, uh, and then when you have something like Kang the Conqueror being taken out of favor because the actor did something in his personal life, <laughs> now what do you do with him? Now you, now he gets his storyline in the comic gets removed and you're like, "Well, fuck, what the fuck were you What does that have to do with anything?" It shit, dude. Kang the Conqueror has multiple incarnations like across the universes or multiverses, so it's like it didn't have to be Jonathan Majors because he wears a fucking he wears a fucking mask yeah. anyways. He could have been somebody else. That's true. So it's like that that character did not have to fucking suffer over a specific actor. So maybe that's another way fucking movies yeah. have been affected by 
possibly well, like the actors affecting the character themselves. This is essentially the entire reason why we have Robert Downey Jr. coming back as Doctor Doom. Because so it works. It works, and they're like, fuck, we gotta do something at the last minute to change this. Let's do this and make it work. Let's just make it work. I just can't believe it, man. I, I think this character is gonna be done in the worst way possible and not at all represent what Doctor Doom is capable of, well, at least what we've seen within movies themselves, or the comics themselves, so it's like, yeah. it, I just feel like we're getting fucked, dude. We need I, to go back to basically comics being in obscurity or uh, it being something that people got bullied over. Yeah. <laughs> in order for them to be like the way they should be, I don't know, I think, I think at this point, we've been so saturated or diluted with the number of comic book movies that quality has suffered. So yeah. we need to go fucking back to just comic books being unpopular, dude. Yeah, I agree. That's probably what's best for business. Anyways, that's more or less it for that. Yeah, right. Well, that's good. We hit 25 minutes, so it's all good. Cool. Anyways, cool. Well, if you like listening to us, you can go to GameRageMagazine.com and hear our other podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at GameRageMagazine, Twitter slash X at GameRageMag. Everything's on the YouTube at Game Rage Magazine. there. You can also follow Adam at All Gas No Trash Official on Instagram, and you can uh, listen to the All Gas No Trash podcast. Anyway, that'll do it for us. Catch you on the next one. That was Panel to Panel, the Game Rage Magazine comic book podcast. Thanks for listening. If you want to know more and follow along, go to Instagram and TikTok. Follow at Game Rage Magazine. If you want to follow on Twitter slash X, at Game Rage Mag. Tune in next time.